On today's Taste Texas, Chef Garth shows us how to pick and prepare a Gulf Coast snapper filet. Plus, we'll head out to a Texas winery to learn how they're transforming old world wine blends. And if your sweet tooth is calling, we'll light up the kitchen with fired up bananas. Pull up a chair and join us at the Taste Texas table. here with us today. I'm Amy Kushner. And I'm Garth Blackburn. And we are just so happy to have such a big, full, lively audience from Dallas. It's just good to have you, and I hope to get to meet each one of you before the show's over. But um, Garth's got a lot of work to do today, and he's going to feed us. He's going to show us some really good tips and a great recipe. What's that? We got some fish for today. Um, big fan of Gulf seafood. At some point, we'll be taking you guys out on the show to go uh, out on a boat and see where some of this, this great fish comes from. Uh, I started a few weeks ago with some farm-raised redfish, but today we're going to use some wild-caught red snapper, mm. which let's go ahead and roll into. We're going to be serving that on some orzo pasta with a really simple brown butter sauce. But oh, well, sounds I, good. I really think it's important when you guys go shopping for fish to know what you're getting. And when you're looking for red snapper, you want to make sure that when you're buying it, that the skin is on it. And the reason is this is what red snapper looks like. A lot of times nowadays, because red snapper is so popular, but it's also very controlled for sustainability, mm -hmm. that they'll try and substitute it with something else that the flesh looks the same. So now you've got two choices. You can ask the fish guy to go ahead and cut the skin off for you. That's what I would do. That is what you would do. Yes. See, everybody agrees. Let, they would do the same thing. Let's all like say. <laughs> Let's say but that you know you how to do it got, properly, right? It, it really is so much easier than what you think. So you're gonna start with a sharp knife. Everybody asks, what's our, my favorite knife? My favorite knife is a sharp knife. It doesn't matter what the brand is. So we could get one at any I would, store, and as long as it's sharp, you're happy? I would rather buy a $16 uh, restaurant supply knife uh -huh. than have a $150 dull German fancy blade. That's, so. that's a good point. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut to the skin, kind of going backwards, and now I'm going to go forwards towards the flesh, maybe, mm -hmm. towards the flesh, <laughs> and then I'm going to grab the back portion with a paper towel, mm -hmm. and then I'm just going to slide it. So what I'm doing right now is I'm not moving the knife, I'm just moving the skin. Okay, wow. and so very little fish was left on the, uh, on the skin. Uh -huh. And now we can just cut this into a couple of fillets. And you want to check to make sure there are no gills and there's no, there are no bones in there. And now we're going to sear it. That looked easy for you, but I, I would have lost half the fish by now. It would have been annihilated. So I think I'm going to ask Practice the butcher makes perfect. to um, do that for me. Or, yeah, or ask the butcher. I'm going to put some salt and pepper on first. I don't like to put a lot of, a lot of other seasoning on there. I like the fish to shine through. Uh -huh. Y'all are gonna eat both sides of the fish, so I'm gonna season both sides of the fish. And now we're gonna take some, what oil would that be, Amy? That would be grapeseed oil. Big fan of grapeseed oil. And since you've been using it so much, I started using it at home, and it really is, makes a difference. And it's a high smoke point. I mean, that's, yeah. you know, so you're not gonna break down that olive oil where it ends up becoming um, kind of acrid. If you start to get a lot of smoke from your olive oil, it's going to not be healthy for you either. Right. So I let the oil get hot before I put the fish in. If you put the fish in right away, it's going to end up it's either sticking or not searing. So mm -hmm. it's nice and hot now. Hear that sizzle. Right. Oh man, that actually the, the fish looks really good. Okay, and I'm starting on the presentation side down because that's going to be the prettiest side. And now we're going to do a little brown butter. Amy, why don't you dump those little medallions into that back pan? All four of these? All four of those. I like the way you think, Garth. Watch that. That looks like a lot of butter. It is a lot of butter. Because it is. I'm, I'm totally on board with that. Y'all could use oh. a little bit less butter. <laughs> why not just do the whole thing? I mean, <laughs> while we're at it. <laughs> What's the difference at that point? Here's what we're doing on the brown butter. 
I'll put some salt and pepper in it so it can dissolve. We're gonna start to let it get brown and toasty. It brings out the nuttiness. It's really delicious. But I wanna do that over a medium heat so it doesn't happen too fast. Right. And then I'm gonna show you guys a really quick trick to make sure that you will never burn brown butter because that's the most common thing to happen even for me. That's what happens in my house. <laughs> Whether you Quickly. want brown butter or not, you're getting it. <laughs> then I dump it. it and I clean the pan out and I start all over. So we're gonna, I've done that plenty of times. We're gonna let that sear for the fish. We're gonna let the butter start to brown. Uh -huh. And now we're gonna toss some orzo pasta into some boiling awesome. water. Okay. And, uh, and we're gonna get rolling from there. And so our timing's gonna all come together all at once. Perfect. All right, well, while you're dumping your orzo pasta into your boiling water, we're gonna toss the break. We'll be right back with more good stuff. snapper right here getting brown on one side we're gonna flip it we are and then you know my favorite technique when it comes especially to meats and seafood and nice sear. pretty sear and then in the oven finish in the oven that's right and so what, what I'm doing I wanted the presentation side down because uh -huh. of this I want you guys to see how pretty that fish oh, looks. Yeah. Doesn't that look gorgeous perfect okay now because most of you all when you, when you eat Go out to dinner, you're not picking up your fish or your steak and then looking at the bottom to see how pretty it looks. I'm not gonna sear it as long on the bottom as I did on okay. the top because I don't want it to get overcooked in the pan. I was wondering that. Okay. I'm cooking on really high heat right now on the mm -hmm. outside. I don't want the outside to get dry before the center is ready. All so right, perfect. I'll cut the heat. Slide that off onto the sheet tray. This is ready at 4, 325. I'm going to do 325, and that's going to take about 15 minutes. And I tell you what, at the same time, it's going to take about 8 to 10 minutes will be some pine nuts that we're going to toast. Uh -huh. So now our timing's going to start coming together. Sure, open that Perfect. up for me. So the pine nuts and the fish, and you just set the timer for 10 minutes. On 10 there. minutes for the pine nuts, and then we'll do an extra 5 for when it comes to the fish. Okay. And that's where it all comes down to the timing, right? That you mm -hmm. want to make sure that it's spot on every single time. Yeah. It's being able to back it out and know that we're going to eat in about 15 minutes. Oh, and you guys 15 can do minutes. That Did you hear that? Key word, 15 minutes. 15 <laughs> chef minutes. <laughs> oh, okay. Because we need to accomplish a few more tasks here and you're okay. going to start on that. All right, what are we doing? So this is some kale. Uh -huh. You don't have to massage it like we did to break it down. We're going to bake it instead. This is oh. going to be a garnish. So if you'll tear it off the ribs, uh -huh. we want to have like the least number of ribs it? possible. Like this? Perfect. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so y'all can fold it over and you're able to get all the outside portion. Mm -hmm. And we're leaving all of this portion, which is real woody. Uh, I got picked on for calling it fibrousy. <laughs> Apparently, fibrousy is not a word. Um, it is now. It is in my kitchen. <laughs> okay. All right, that looks pretty good. So you've got some Texas olive oil from the Texas Olive Ranch over there. Okay. If this? you will drizzle some of that over. Okay. Well, wait, I got to spread that out, make it all even. Make it pretty, okay? Make it pretty. Too much? Or, the, or a, a half a cup. That's fine That's too. A lot. <laughs> oh, shoot. So, y'all should probably measure it separately at home so and sorry. pour that in. Did I just kill the kale? Or, I killed the kale. Or put your thumb on it. This is going to be oven fried rather than <laughs> oven baked now. Uh, well, it, look at that. It came out so fast. Instead of letting you apply the salt, <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and do now the salt I want to do this because this salt's Great. really cool. Tell everybody what that is. This is a smoked sea salt, so it's going to add some rich body. Uh, a little bit goes a long way. That's fairly expensive stuff, but once you, once you buy that one, uh, that one container, it's going to last you for a year. Are you sure we didn't overdo it on the... We didn't overdo it on the <laughs> no, olive oil. we didn't. Somebody <laughs> other than we, like you and the mouse in your pocket, maybe. All right, so we're going to even that out. And okay. that's going to be cooked uh, for about 12 minutes as well at Perfect. 325. Uh-oh, so, this is getting burnt. Oh, so you know what we do? Take a look at this. So it's not burnt yet, it's brown. Right. We'll cut the heat. Dump the crab in. Mm -hmm. Dump the parsley in. Hit it with the lemon Save juice. Save the butter. Save the butter. And now all we need to do is pour that into a bowl. And so what I did by adding the cold ingredients, by adding the cold ingredients to that hot butter, I slowed down the cooking, or I actually stopped the cooking. And then I removed it from the pan that was still really warm. And now I've got brown butter with the crab that's ready to go. Well, you move fast. 
You move fast. You got to be ready to go. Once it starts to get brown, if you add those cold ingredients to it, that'll stop the cooking. Okay. It makes it easy just to chill it down and then put it into the separate container is going to make sure that this hot pan doesn't continue to cook it. Okay. So that absolutely the easiest way, the easiest approach. And at Looks, this point, it we're, smells delicious. And what are we back back to the kale? We're just going to toss it okay. in the oven. On this one? You got it. Awesome. You got room in there? You sure yeah, do. Wow. Perfect. Nice. All right. Anything yeah, else? I think we're ready for the uh, next little we break as that's cooking. We got to wait for that. We'll finish up the orzo pasta. I'm going to show you all some fresh sure ingredients. Smells there. delicious. All right. We'll be right back. It's almost done. <laughs> This up, Garth. What what's left? So we backed out the timing. The pasta is just about finished. Yes. Uh, started draining that. We're getting ready to pull the fish out. Let's take a look at how it looks. Let's see this. Right. So it still looks perfectly brown on the top but when you seared it, but not overcooked. And we can kind of push at it. If you see it start to flake like that, right? That means it's done. And then you just push it back together because that's what restaurants do anyway. Oh, is that what they do? Your, I didn't need to know that. Your food has Did been you? touched. <laughs> Okay, that's our There's the perfect kale. Oven fried kale. <laughs> kind of see the the part that's particularly brown where all that oil was pooling down. That's the best part. We pulled the pine nuts out just uh, about 3 minutes ago. These and, pine nuts are perfect too. Aren't they? Yes. And now we're going to put together the orzo. Uh, this is going to be the base of the plate. Okay. So, why don't you take some of those Jacksonville Texas grown grape tomatoes? Mm -hmm. Those are from the Plano Farmers Market. Where do you want that? Put those in. All right. And then hit some salt on those. Those need more salt than anything else we're going to be putting in there. All right. Okay, some butter. More butter. Oh, good. We're going to use this whole thing before this show's over. Awesome. Like a what, lot or Whether I wanted you to or not. <laughs> How much? Like that much? That's good. Perfect. You wanted it in there, didn't you? I did. I did. <laughs> if you didn't, you got it. <laughs> okay, let's take a look. Basil, everybody knows what do you do? How do you cut basil? You roll that up. And then you julienne it. Right. I learned. See, I'm paying attention. After all these weeks, I'm finally learning something. So that's a nice little julienne. Except I don't cut that fast. Would be but I can still get it done. Oh, but when people chop parsley, they always end up just chopping it and it's going everywhere. And you have to cut it a bunch mm -hmm. in order to get that, that nice chop. Well, use the same technique. So take that parsley. Bunch it all up. Really tight, because the tighter it is, mm -hmm. the fewer times you have to cut it. So I'll go across once, and then I'll turn my knife the other way, right. 90 degrees. And give it another chop. Okay, and that wasn't about speed. I cut that about, what, 10 times each direction. Well, yes, you did do it fast, though. <laughs> Faster, but 20 cuts, and that you're was good fast. to go. Instead of like 50 with regular parsley. Okay. Dump the Parmesan in. All right. And now let's go grab that orzo. Oh, nice. Okay, what I don't want to do, I don't want to rinse the orzo off. I want that cooking liquid, mm -hmm. that starchiness to still be on there. And why is that? Because that's going to absorb all this flavor to it. Why don't you scrape that out for me? All right. Teamwork. <laughs> How do you all want right, that's this? That's good to... right there. All right. So mix that all up for me. Mm -hmm. With that? Uh-huh. Okay. That's going to melt the butter, that's going to melt the cheese, that's going to bring it all together, and that's going to taste delicious with some good vino. Oh, wow. And with that, I think we should go check out one of our favorite oh, new yes. wineries. Oh, my gosh, the be oh, best winery. Y'all got to see this. Take a look. Hey there. Welcome to Arcade. Do you find that this area of Texas grows the grapes better? Well, I wouldn't say that it's necessarily better than the West Texas area, the High Plains area. Mm -hmm. We've got good topography, we've got good uh, air drainage, which is important. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got good water in the ground, uh, even though grapes don't need a lot of water, mm -hmm. you do need to be able to irrigate now and then, especially during heavy drought years like we had a couple years ago. Okay, Amy, tell me about how you got started into this business. Well, my husband had grown grapes and made wine in his backyard before I ever knew him. Oh, okay. So it was always a part of our life uh -huh. together. We had the problem Property. Uh, we got the property and started growing grapes when I was in middle school, I'd say. And I had to come up here every weekend with my brothers and I and 
work. And work in the vineyard, yeah, so. Well, now this is a little bit of uneven ripening, but the uh, one of the ways that we get the ripening uh, even and, and proper on the cab is that we do a lot of leaf plucking. So I actually come through here and pluck the leaves off because Cabernet in particular, sun really affects the ripening process. The best wines, in my opinion, are the, are classically made French wines. So um, you're just using some science to exactly help make a better wine. Yeah. So you know, as you can see in the winery, we we do manual punch downs with our reds rather than. Um, uh, kind of newer style, newer ways to do it. Um, uh, now I, I artificially chill my fermentations to keep the temperature a little bit lower. So what exactly are you doing right here? So right now, I am punching the cap down. The cap being all of the solids, the skins, the mm -hmm. seeds, all of the must. So how many days will it sit and you do this process? Well, that is determined by the winemaker as far as the style that he's going for. It's the best part of coming to the winery, right? Cheers. Cheers. So it's so much fun to take y'all to places that were new to us as well. And a Texas winery is a really refreshing visit. It was. It didn't even look like te you, Texas. You drive around the corner and what do you we see? Had no idea. Rolling hills, beautiful place, we gorgeous thought we vineyard. Were suddenly in Napa. It was an incredible Almost. experience. And that wine's going to go great with this finished product. This is amazing and so colorful. I love it. I can't wait to try it. OK, so are we ready to plate? No, we're going to take a quick break, and then we're going to plate. Oh, we're drawing this out too much. But we will be right back. Final product, right back. All right, we're back to the hot spot here at the Subzer Wolf showroom. We're in my prep kitchen getting ready to make a delicious dessert. So let's take a look at what we're going to do today. Got some banana nut bread. With that, we're going to do an awesome Garland, Texas bourbon sauce with some Desert Creek honey and some Mill King cream. And then for the finish, for the grand finale, I'm going to cut open this banana. We're going to put a little sugar on it and we're gonna torch it. All right, let's head on over to the range and get things fired up. I've got my banana nut bread. I'm gonna go ahead and toast this in a medium high preheated pan. A Little bit of grapeseed oil because it's neutral. Hear that sizzle. I'm not using butter because butter's gonna start to burn before I get a nice sear on the nut, banana nut bread. So I'm gonna press that flat so it gets a nice sear, as much of it's touching the pan as possible. Okay, and while that's searing, we're gonna head over and make the sauce with a little flambe, a little fun spin to it. Let's take a look. First things first, I'm heating up the pan with the far side being the hottest. So it's a little bit offset, but I don't wanna light it directly from the bottle. So I've got this garland whiskey. I'm gonna pour it into a separate container. And I'll go ahead and put a lid back on the bottle and save, save that for me for later. And I'm doing this separately so that it doesn't catch the bottle on fire. I like starting with the alcohol first. That way I can burn the alcohol out and then add the rest of my ingredients. Okay, let's fire it up now. I'm gonna pull the pan off of the flame. Pour my alcohol in. And if you want the fireworks show, you can add some cinnamon to it while it's on fire. We'll swirl that around. If it's a little too much heat for you, pour your cream in immediately. The flame goes out. That's the little safety side. That's that milking cream. Now I'm going to put in some brown sugar, some Desert Creek honey. Blake does such a great job in his honey. Amy and I got to visit there a few weeks ago. Unpasteurized. So that'll take about a minute or two. While that's happening, I'm gonna flip the banana nut bread over and then we're gonna go plate it all up. All right, let's finish off the rest of the fun with our brulee banana. So I just cut this banana in half. We'll pop it out of the peel. And I'll break it into a couple of pieces. We'll top those with some sugar. And now just like a creme brulee, we can go ahead and catch it on fire, burn it up. So we'll go ahead and plate this all up, that toasted banana nut bread. Of course, some freshly whipped cream, our bananas on top, a little bit of mint for garnish, and then some fresh berries all around. 
So in just a few minutes, you can have a restaurant style dessert, that double fired up banana nut bread with that incredible garnish. Hope you guys will try it at home. some snapper and all the fixings that go with it. Garth. All the fixings. This is amazing. So pretty, so colorful, and I'm ready to see how you're going to put this all together. It's that delicious orza with those Texas tomatoes. Put that down as a little base. And that Parmesan cheese in there, too. That kind of holds it together. See how it's I got some that. height? Yeah. yeah. That's what you're looking at a lot of restaurants. Mm -hmm. Now we've got our two snapper Perfect. Legs. Gorgeous. We've got that. Yeah, back brown to that brown butter, butter with the lump crab. Oh, <laughs> see. With lots of butter. Thanks, Amy. That's gorgeous. All right, and then let's garnish it off with that crispy kale and some of the pine nuts. The crispy kale. Extra crispy. <laughs> Little bit greasy. <laughs> It'll be perfect, I promise. And then these pine nuts are gorgeous, perfectly browned. I got a good little extra more. on top of there. Just to say I contributed something. You did. There we go. There you go. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're gonna serve that with a little bit of that beautiful. Your favorite new wine. It's, it's a great white wine. It's Roussan, which according to, uh, to Grayson, this is a white wine for red wine lovers. It is, and I'm a big red wine, I prefer red wine. But then when I had this, I was like, mm, this one I can do with fish or chicken or Absolutely. Anything I think like it's a that? great combination. This is absolutely something you guys could put together at home. There's not a lot of last minute craziness if you're doing the finishing in the oven. We can we can do so much of it ahead of time and really enjoy our wine then. True. Okay, I need a fork. You do. Do you have forks around here? Oh, you sure do. Well there you go. It's a handy fork. Oh my gosh. This is the moment we've been waiting for. Okay, I've been waiting for. <laughs> Combo. Hang on. Too big of a bite. Same here. <laughs> I was hoping one of us wouldn't take a bite. The um, fresh herbs in that. Delicious. That brown butter. Who would have thought? I would have burned that, but it was perfect. Let's balance it out. Yeah, thank you so much. It's delicious. Delicious. Okay, so we need to let everybody know that you can get this recipe on our website. You can download it. It's tastetexastv.com. Also find us on social media, Twitter, Instagram, okay. Facebook. We post there all the time, so we'd love for you to join us and tell us how wonderful Garth's recipes are because he loves to hear that. And your complaints. <laughs> no complaints. Anyway, until next week, y'all, thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you then.